I'm going to show you how you can make ionic bonds and how you can use the periodic table to easily identify them. A few things before we start, we want to remember that an ionic bond is always between a metal and a non-metal. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in our line down here so that we understand that we need something from this section on the left and then something on the right for an ionic bond. So we need a metal and we need a non-metal, okay? When they form an ionic bond, the metal is going to give up an electron or transfer an electron to the non-metal or more than one, okay? So for our first example, we are going to look at N, A, and Cl. So we're gonna look on the periodic table first. We find N, A, okay, that is our metal. And then we find Cl, our non-metal. A few things we know based on their placement on the periodic table. We've got sodium in group one, chlorine in group 17. This tells me that sodium has one valence electron and chlorine has seven valence electrons, okay? How we know group one has one, group two has two, group 13 has three, 14, 15, 16, and then eight, except for helium, which has two, okay? So when we want to set this up, I'm going to use the Lewis dot structure. You could also use Bohr models, but this Lewis dot structure will show you the valence electrons. So if I start, I'm gonna write the element symbol. So in this case, N A, N is uppercase, A is lowercase, and I'm going to show how many valence electrons. So in the case of our sodium right here, it's got one valence electron. Next to it, I'm going to put uppercase C, lowercase L for chlorine, and I'm going to show it's seven valence electrons. Using the Lewis dot structure, you could also draw out the Bohr model instead. That's just a lot more drawing than I feel like doing. Okay, if you notice, I went in a clockwise rotation. I made sure I filled one on each side before I started doubling them up or pairing them up. So as we know, elements or atoms would like to be whole outer shells. So chlorine just needs one more electron to be happy. So where is it gonna get that one from? It's gonna steal it, oh, it's going to steal it from sodium. So we would draw an arrow. That arrow shows an ionic bond because it's showing that one electron is leaving sodium and going to chlorine. What this also tells us about our new ions, which are formed when we have an ionic bond. If sodium originally, had 11 protons because it's element number 11 and it had 11 electrons. When it loses an electron, it still has 11 protons, but it now has 10 electrons. This gives sodium a plus one charge. So in here, I would say plus one. It's a superscript put above to show that it is now an ion. Same thing over here with chlorine. Chlorine started with 17. Uh, protons and 17 electrons. It took one from sodium. So now it still has 17 electrons because it has to have 17 to be chlorine, but it now has 18 electrons. That's gonna give us a minus one charge. So now we have Na plus one, Cl minus one, okay? What's really nice about the periodic table is that if you know that it is in group one, it's always gonna end up with a plus one charge. Group two will always end up with a plus two charge. Group three will always end up with a plus three. Group four will either have a plus or minus four, depending. Group five, this is where we work backwards. So we come over here, we wanna get to eight. So that's a zero. We've got a minus one charge, minus two and minus three, okay? Using this information, I can also give you another example. So if we're looking at lithium, just looking at the periodic table, I see lithium is in group one. So I know lithium is going to have a minus one charge or plus one charge because it is in group one. And then let's say we combine it with iodine this time. 
iodine is going to have a minus one charge up top because it is in group 17. When I'm drawing my Bohr model, I mean, my Lewis dot diagram, I'd still write out lithium. It's in group one, so it's got one valence electron. We've got iodine over here. Okay, iodine has seven valence electrons because it's in group 17. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. From there, I would show my ionic bond by showing the arrow moving the electron. I can confirm this, lithium gave away an electron, so it's got one more proton than electron. Iodine gained an electron, so now it has a minus one charge, okay? Let's do one with one that's not a plus one and minus one. Let's say this time we are going to combine, uh, let's go with oxygen and we'll go with magnesium, okay? So in the case of magnesium, it's in group two. So I know setup wise magnesium, I've got one, two, okay? Oxygen is in group 16. So I know it's gonna have six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. I know from looking at the periodic table that this oxygen, if I count minus one, minus two, it's gonna have two extra electrons. And I know from looking at magnesium, we've got plus one, plus two. It's gonna lose two electrons. And I can show this by drawing my two electrons moving. What this would look like now when I write it out is Mg plus two as a superscript and then oxygen minus two. This shows me that these ions, magnesium has a positively charged cation and oxygen has a negatively charged anion. Now these are nice scenarios where we have an even number of atoms. Sometimes though, you get situations like this. So we have Na3 nitrogen, okay? When we have a subscript, what this is telling us is that there are gonna be three of these sodium molecules. So how I would lay this out, I'm gonna start with my nitrogen and I'm gonna put three sodiums around it. We're gonna see why we need three sodiums in a moment. If I look on the periodic table, sodium is in group one, that tells me that it's gonna have a plus one charge up here, okay? And it's gonna have one electron. So I'm gonna give it one electron per sodium molecule, okay? If I find nitrogen on the periodic table, it's the non-metal. It's in group 15. I also know if I count it backwards, minus one, minus two, it's gonna have a minus three charge up here, but it's in group 15, so it's got five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. It needs eight once again to be happy, so it's short three electrons. So we're going to draw our lines. It's gonna take one from this sodium, one from this sodium, and one from that sodium. It takes three sodiums, for every nitrogen to make an ionic bond, okay? Instead, so you figure that out because I gave it to you here. Instead, if I were to just give you the two elements, so this time we are combining magnesium and iodine, okay? Magnesium is in group two, iodine is in group 17. That means that iodine has seven valence electrons Magnesium has two valence electrons. Now, now they don't really look like they're gonna help each other out. So let's just start by laying them out and seeing where we go and where we can add to it. So if I have my magnesium in the middle, we got magnesiums in group two. So one and two. And then we've got my iodine here in group 17, 
I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I create an ionic bond between them, iodine is now happy. It has eight valence electrons. The issue is magnesium isn't happy. It still has this one valence electron up here. What is it going to need? It's going to need another iodine. So sometimes we need to add them and we can figure that out by making sure that we have eight on the outside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This new iodine will be happy once it takes one for magnesium. And magnesium is now happy because it doesn't have any electrons in its outer shell. The metal should never have any left by the time you're done with your ionic bond. And your non-metal should have eight, unless we're talking about helium or hydrogen. How I would write this as the formula. So I've got metal first, so magnesium. Magnesium's right here. So it's got a plus two charge. So magnesium plus two. And then the iodine. Iodine has a minus one charge, but I have two iodines. So I'm gonna come down in here and say two. So this is magnesium ion because it's got a, two more protons than electrons. And I have two sets of iodine ions that both have an extra electron. That is what that reads. You can find extra practices on the internet. Good luck.